Hello and welcome to this tutorial about Krita's dilate and erode filters. Krita is a popular open source alternative to programs like Photoshop and other design programs. And uh, it, uh, the program is free to download and it's available for the main systems Linux, Windows and Mac. And this tutorial is going to be more focused on Linux and particularly in Ubuntu because that's a distry use but pretty much everything I say all the filters is applicable with the exception of the installation parts which are of course different for each operative system but there are plenty of online resources that you can find and the, the installation process is not complicated it's pretty straightforward as you will see so firstly a disclaimer, um, I'm no expert on design programs but I'm going a bit in depth about things like the installation process and why we do things in a certain way because there are possibilities to save a lot of time and uh, maybe you already know what is Krita and what is Gmeek and how they delete and erode filters work and you don't need that part of the tutorial so you can skip to the end of the video or I also put uh, in the in the video description I, I'll put what's the, the options you need to get to to dilate and erode but if you are starting there are a, a lot of things that are good to know uh, this information uh, I found it's relatively rare to find it takes some time to gather it all together it took me a few hours of trial and error so I thought it would be interesting to make a tutorial and maybe helping you shave some time of your learning curve so firstly what are dilate and erode? dilate and erode are a kind of filters of processes of manipulation you can do with a computer to have an image and in, in particular this, these filters are one of the most useful for at least for a beginner like me I use them all the time because what they do is they allow you to fatten and, re and reduce the contour of, of an image of particularly of an image made with monochrome lines so it's an easy way to get a lot of bulk into a picture, a lot of mass if you think the line is too thin, it's very easy all at once, you can change it. To, to show exactly how it works, I'm, I'm going to show a quick example with, with empty paint, with, which is the, the program with which I started. I have here this masterpiece, of, it's a self-portrait and uh, I'm going to uh, apply to it the dilate and effect filters and in, as you can see in, in empty paint it's very straightforward there's uh, an effects menu at the bottom of the options you have dilate and erode one thing that's good to know about dilate and erode is that they frequently work in a counterintuitive way meaning what you you would th think works dilating the line erodes it and the other way around so for example here if I press dilate it has done the opposite thing it has eroded the image making it disappear so I'm going to undo and we'll apply the other filter we are going to erode so it will make the line fatter and uh, these effects can be applied several times as you can see it's a very simple way to enhance the, the image and another hint that it's important with this kind of images and which it took me a certain certain time to to notice is that uh, sometimes you may find the dilate and erode options grayed out let me show it in a new document I'm going to paint anything here quick ok 
okay so now if we go to effects dilate and erode are now grayed out we wouldn't be able to fasten this image in, in these cases what you have to do is going to image or the equivalent option in your design program and convert to RGB RGB means red, green, blue I, I don't know all the technicalities of the matter but it, this has something to do with the way the image is encode, encoded so now if we go back to effects you'll see dilates and remote are, are usable so we're going to dilate in this case dilate dilates and you can also erode it or undo to return to the to the other point so mm, speaking a bit about my case as a user of design programs I, I, I stayed for a very long time with empty paint because the program was was enough for all the, the common little design needs I used to have and I really like empty paint it's a great program for what it does it's very compact everything is at one or two clicks away and uh, it loads really quick and it's ideal for the, the AC fix to an image where you have to do something that takes one minute it's like a, a bit like the the Swiss Army knife of, of design and I still even though I, I've moved pretty much to Krita sometimes it's just more convenient to use empty paint in for, for little stuff in the, in the time Krita takes to initialize you have already gone in and out with empty paint for certain little tasks but at certain points obviously I found stuff that uh, I found the limits of what empty paint could do for certain design tasks and then I looked for other options I, I started using GIMP which is another great open source program which of course you you all will know and for sure will, you will have used sometimes but uh, I finally uh, landed in, in Krita because it has a feature that is absolutely killer for me it's called a stabilizer and uh, like the name implies it helps you to to paint with the with the mouse for for people like me who don't draw often and therefore I, I don't have a drawing palette the stabilizer helps you to draw with the mouse by opposing a, a certain resistance to your movements so the the picture the drawing does not reflect your hand uh, trembling and uh, this this feature is very mm, it really improves the, the results you get I, I've even heard of people who prefers using the stabilizer than an actual tablet and in my case it was a lifesaver or something I had to do I, I first uh, tried to research if there was something similar in GIMP that I could install some kind of plugin or similar instead of having to learn another program but it seems there isn't so that's why I, I moved to Krita and then when when I started to to use Krita in the first sessions one thing uh, that I soon needed because like I say I use it a lot is the dilate hero filters so I went here, filter, and started to explore this list. It's one with a lot of things, a lot of sub options. And what do you know? I went to and fro through this list a lot of time, and the dilates and erode were nowhere to be found. To me, it was it felt very strange because. Uh, in GIMP the dilate and erode filters were also I don't remember exactly where are they but they were pretty visible and I I had always assumed that the dilate and erode were like a very basic thing like 
like all, pro all design programs have a brush or a save as option it's like you have a given but it turned out not to be the case mm, to my surprise maybe it's not a tool that all designers need or use and that's the thing with more complex programs you often have more options and with more options comes more complexity and more ways of arranging all the different tools if empty paint like I say was like a a little shiny Swiss army knife this this beasts the gimp and Krita are more, more like helicopters or tanks something that takes longer to master and has more nooks and crannies so I started to research how to get the the dilated road filter in Krita and it turned out that to use it you needed a plugin called Jimic. Uh, the the plugin in, in in question is not is not does not come by default with Krita but it's pre it's, it's present here in the menus already this late final options here gray it out start gmic qt and reapply the last gmic filter but uh, you have to install gmic separately so how you how do you I'm going to close here how do you install gmic well there are several methods i'm going to explain how i did it for ubuntu the simplest process okay so the system for ubuntu is as follows first go to the gmic download page which is gmic gmic.eu files linux and there you have a repository that contains a list of numbered uh, gmic versions the, the older versions are at the top so unless you have a particular reason to need some of the older versions what you want to do is go to the bottom of the page to find the latest and greatest here we are so here what we have to look for is a file that mentions Krita because there are also gimmick versions for GIMP and we see a few have Krita and then we the file name also has to mention the name of our distro this is important uh, you have to know the name of your distro not the number for example in my case my distro is Ubuntu 19 and uh, its name is Disco Dingo so to find the, the file name there's a little problem of usability here because as you can see the file names get interrupted they are not complete and there's a lot of repetitive characters here so it's a bit uncomfortable to look for here's the, the my gmic version which i installed before so so it's in a different color but the way you would do it when everything you had to find in this sea of characters this soup of letters what you need to two tricks i found one are the first will be just clicking in the in the file names and you get the the confirmation screen for download and here you can read the the full name of the of the file if if it's not the one you want you just cancel it and check the next one and the other the other way that you can use also is just hovering over the over the links and on the bottom left corner of the most of browser you get the the full link too also uh, in this repository there are two types of files 
you have the add dot deb and dot zip. Uh, downloading dot dot zip, I found is the the easiest way to to do it. And dot dev adds a couple of steps more. So, in in my case, I I would download this one. Gmic latest version for Krita for Ubuntu Disco Dingo, 64 bits. This icon moves to show there's been a download. We go to the folder for the downloads, and here it is a zip, for zip file. We do the usual thing with it, we have to unzip it, so we open the terminal. Unzip, Gmic. And this gives us two new files, Gmic, Krita, Qt, and a readme file. Uh, what the documentation says is that we have to move this file to somewhere where the program can find it. In my case, I moved it to user bin, I guess, in any path, as it's included in the path environment variable can do. Do that, which requires super user permits. So, sudo, I'm going to move to make Krita Qt to user bin. We give it the password, and now um, I'm going to open again the previous image with Krita here it is and now I'm going to filter and now as you can see the Gmic options can, can be clicked let's click it and here we have the the smiley and we can apply all these filters to it um, still it's not immediate because in this plethora of options the dilate and erode it takes uh, some time to be found too so the option you have to go to is contours and uh, we think contours morphological filter and you can see the image already has eroded um, so the, in this case has done the opposite dilate and here in this drop down menu you have erosion, dilation and a lot of other very complex things and unlike, unlike empty paint where you have to repeat the command you have this slider here where you can change the degree of dilation or erosion once you're ready to commit you can press apply or ok and there you have it that's how you apply erode and delete in, in Krita so that's it for me for this tutorial I hope some of this stuff is useful to you and maybe has saved you some time of research and try and error don't forget to like and subscribe for more Linux related stuff and thank you for watching and happy drawing. Bye!